I'm being real sloppy here and, and I'm probably gonna make some kind of mistake and I don't wanna do that on camera. <laughs> so now we're live off the solar panel and as long as I don't touch this one to that one, I'm pretty good. I'm not gonna go sticking my tongue on there. Can you hear it? <laughs> it's getting hot. What I'm doing today is I'm disconnecting the power supply for the white LEDs because I'm putting all the white LEDs on those little bitty solar panels that I have up on the roof. Um, and that means I can shut down the power supplies that are uh, supplying power to the white lights. So I've gone ahead and unplugged this one. I've unplugged each one of these that's connected to the white lights. Uh, the way these Vipar Spectres work is they have a power supply for each color. These are the blues. For this one I can tell because it's hot. <laughs> it runs hot. And now this is cooling down because I, I literally just unplugged them. We can see up there. The only one that I've got running is, on the white is actually coming off the solar panel. That's uh, the upgrade. There's the uh, solar light there, solar tube. Anyway. Yeah, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and split that line that you see coming off the solar panel up there. I'm going to split it three ways because that's just way too much white light on there. The sun is pretty much hitting it full on <laughs> right now. So if I go ahead and split that to share all three of these Vipar spectral lights on the whites, I think that's going to drop down a little bit and it'll be just enough. That's going to allow me to disconnect half of the power supplies. I've had one solar panel connected to the white LEDs for two months now and I never bothered to disconnect the power supply to it, which was uh, this one over here, this one. Nice and cold now. I bet that's going to save me a ton of energy. And we'll see how that holds up through the winter. And then I've got some big panels on the way for the blue spectrum. And we're going to see if that, uh, that works. And <laughs> I dropped all my cords and been doing all kinds of work down here. So I need to tidy that back up again. No worries. All is good. Things are happy on the, the supply. So let me get to it. These are the connectors that I've been getting. Um, I kind of like these ones because they're a little more compact than these ones, but these ones are super easy because you just push these down, slip the wires in those holes after you push these down and boom, it's like a quick connect for the wires. These ones take a little um, screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver. You slip the wires in there just the same way and then you have two of them and they connect together. It's pretty slick. Don't know how they're going to hold up to salt water. <laughs> We're going to find out over the years, aren't we? So I'm getting ready to split this solar panel light that comes down. And what I'm going to do is cut it somewhere down there. And then I'm going to splice three connectors off of that. One going, one going here, and then one going to the other panel, and then one coming over to this LED panel. Um, and when you're cutting this wire, look how it, it's tightly together, right? They're not separate wires. If I go ahead and cut this right now, that solar um, panel is supplying direct current through here. It may or may not arc. I'm not going to take the chance because we're talking about 48 volts. Well, 70 volts, really. Uh, the amps aren't very high on that, but I don't want to ruin this wire somewhere because this wire is pretty thin. I'm pushing it with the um, with the how thin this wire is. I, I should probably have a thicker wire on there. But it's possible that it could melt it even within the split second that it touches. And also when I cut it, those little end wires that are left wild there could be touching each other before I have a chance to put everything down and get to it and whatnot. So what I want to do is just take a knife and then cut down in between the wires, separate them and cut each one separately. Now you don't, you definitely don't want to mess with um, AC like this, but with DC, I don't really have a problem with it as long as I keep them separate and don't touch them. That being said, I could probably just cut it and I'd be fine, but I'm going to go ahead and separate them and be safe. Now we're live off the solar panel 
And as long as I don't touch this one to that one, I'm pretty good. I'm not gonna go sticking my tongue on there, <laughs> but I'm okay to do that, even though it's 48 volts, low amps, again, it's direct current, it's not AC. I'm gonna go ahead and twist all these four connections off, and we're gonna solder them, and then I'm gonna go ahead and cover them with some electrical tape. Actually, maybe not, I'm gonna paint some of that tape that I have, Whoa, which is the hot one. This is the hot one here. And these are the three connectors, one for each panel, one for each LED panel. So I'll go ahead and do that off camera because I'm being real sloppy here and, and I'm probably going to make some kind of mistake and I don't want to do that on camera. Ah! <laughs> Kidding! We'll go ahead and do that on camera. So one at a time. Maybe I should get my glasses on. Got to hang on to the live wire. <laughs> don't want that dropping and touching, shorting itself out. Okay. Red wire first, red wires. Ba -dum -boom. I'm getting them at the same length right there where the, uh, the red um, cover ends. Now twist them all together. Looks good. Now do the same to the black wires. So after I, once I strip it, I spin all the separate little wires together. Getting them all the same length so that they're relatively, you want a decent amount of twist on there. You want a decent amount of wire. Now if I was a real electrician, this would be a no, 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 no. You'd want to get a special connector. There are special connectors that do this. Now this wire isn't thick enough that you can put a twisty on it and, so, and it's pretty thin. So that's why I want to solder it to make sure that it's all bound together. And then I'm going to put some rubber paint on it. Or just tape. I don't know. We'll see when I get there. If I just put tape, water could get down in there. So like if I wrap this with tape, water could work its way down the tape and get in there. And that's kind of why I don't want to use tape. There. Voila. Let's get going here. I use this tip for melting plastic. And once you get plastic on the end of this thing, I don't know why, but it just does not melt through the plastic and get hot enough. <laughs> oh my God, look at that. I have soldering issues, let me tell you. All right, I gotta switch that tip out. Cooled it off in a little cup of water here already. I'm gonna go ahead and use a glove to take the tip off. Can I touch that? These gloves have holes in them. <laughs> They've seen better days. Let me back off the tips a little bit. Yeah, I think I can do that. Let's see if I can't get that off of there. That messing up the whole thing. I think I can ditch the glove now. It doesn't feel like it fits to me. Yeah, it's the same. It's just kind of loose. So big fat wires, that means I better use a big fat tip, right? Can you hear it? <laughs> it's getting hot. Oh yeah, that looks like it's getting hot. We're just going to saturate these wires. Get them completely covered in solder. Spicy ain't messing around. That is a nice blob of messy, messy, messy solder on the hot wire or the positive. We want that solder right into all the individual wires. Up and down along the sides, make sure it gets nice and sopping full of lead. So I could not find my rubber to paint this with, so what's the very next thing that we can use? We can grab some nail polish. Shh, we don't want, it. We don't want that out there. <laughs> We can grab some nail polish because it's epoxy. Make sure when you snag the one off of um, your significant other that you're getting epoxy nail polish. We'll probably put a couple of coats on there. This is a little electrician tip. I have no idea who discovered how that works or 
how they put two and two together, but lo and behold, epoxy nail polish will do the trick. There, I think I got that. We'll let that dry for a few minutes and put another coat and then we'll get it all into action. I was wondering why that ball kept getting bigger and then it hit me. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs>